Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at a really cool sort of quasi-experimental version of the Chinese SKS. So first off, a big thanks to viewer Christian, who sent me this rifle to film. Thank you, Christian. This is a cool one that'll be neat to take a look at, because it's really a quite rare version of the SKS. Now, the Chinese started production of the SKS in 1956. It was designated the Type 56. Not to, be, uh, mis not to be misconstrued with the Chinese Type 56, which was their copy of the AK. Both rifles made in the same year, started in the same year, had the same designation. But uh, the SKS that the Chinese were making was a straight, essentially a straight copy of the Russian SKS. This is very much a World War II generation of rifles, so it has a wood stock on it, as you can see here. It's got a heavy-duty milled receiver. There was a lot of machine time um, and expense that went into making the SKS, and it was a very durable, high-quality, long-lasting rifle as a result. Now the Russians would cut off production of the SKS relatively quickly and replace it with the AK as a standard service rifle. The Chinese didn't do that. They also of course started making AKs, but they kept making the SKSs, both for internal use and for export. And in the early 1970s, as far as we can tell, the inf information on this is a bit sketchy, but in the early 70s they started a couple of programs to look at how they could reduce the manufacturing cost of the SKS. Instead of that big, expensive, complicated, time-consuming milled receiver, what about a cast receiver? Or a stamped receiver? Now, I don't have a cast receiver here to show you, but I do have a stamped receiver. These are floating around out there. They're actually, once you know what to look for, they're really easy to spot. And it's a really cool variation on the SKS. So let's take a closer look at it. It looks like a pretty standard SKS, but we have a particularly distinctive feature right here. And that is the rivet that holds the front trunnion into the sheet metal receiver. So there's one on the right, and there's one on the left here. And once you know to look for those, they're pretty easy to spot because they're about halfway above the wood line. Now the markings here are a little difficult to make out, but we've got type 56 there. And then we have a factory code, and this is 0138. Most of the stamped guns that are uh, known and documented in the US have this factory code, but they're also found with 0139, 0144, and 0145. The serial number looks like it's very high, but it's actually pretty low. So what we have here, the first two digits are actually the year of production. So this is a 1970 gun. You will also find these with 7.1 or 7.1 million series uh, serials, that's 1971. And then our actual serial number is 1806. So we have a leading zero and then 1800. The number restarts for 1971, so you'll get 7100001 up through about into the 6000s. I do want to point out that this is actually a replacement stock, because the original stock cracked, which was a known feature on these rifles, and in fact this replacement stock is also cracking itself. In terms of general features, we have a 20 inch long barrel, we have a folding spike style bayonet, we have a plastic handguard on this one. I'm honestly not sure if that's typical or if that's if that varied. It's been very hard to find pictures of uh, full-length pictures of a lot of the stamped receiver guns. So this one, that's a, a known uh, commercial export uh, style from China. Now let's take a closer look at the receiver itself. That's the real difference here. So we'll do a quick field strip on this. Removing the trigger guard in an SKS can sometimes be a little annoying. Make sure you have the safety on in this position, uh, and then you push that little button forward to release the trigger guard. There we go. We can pull that out, and we can pull the magazine out. Then we just need to take the cleaning rod out, and we can pop the stock off. For comparison here, I have a standard milled Russian SKS, and then we have our stamped Chinese version. The biggest difference is right up here at the barrel. You can see on the Russian gun the receiver includes this section that the barrel is pressed into. On the Chinese gun, that is this separate piece that's riveted in place. If we look at this from the front, you can see the sheet metal receiver right here, and then 
dropping back right there. This piece right here on the inside is the actual front trunnion, so the barrel's pinned into that, and then that is riveted to the actual sheet metal receiver with two big rivets. Note that in the stock we have to have two little cutouts right there to accommodate the space for those rivets. That makes the stock pretty thin up here. The inside of the receivers look fairly different because again this is one milled piece, this Russian one, so uh, there's a cutout here for the hammer, whereas on the stamped receiver gun there's no need for anything back here. You need a block in the middle of the receiver here, that's going to act as the locking shoulder right there, the locking surface, and then it has the attachment points for the magazine. Now in this case uh, those hooks to attach the magazine are part of the stamped receiver. The locking shoulder here is a milled piece that is spot welded in place, you can see a spot weld there and there. And then we have a rear trunnion here, and this is riveted on the bottom and the top. Of course on the milled gun the attachment for the receiver cover and the spring and all is, well, integral right there. Here there's a rear trunnion there, and the, receive, the, the receiver itself is folded around. It's interesting to note how they did this. This is the tower that has the spring lock to hold the trigger guard in place. That is also folded, but this side comes in in an L shape underneath, this side is, on an, L, is an L shape that sits on top, as opposed to just a solid milled block. On a stamped receiver AK, on an AKM, the rails in here that the bolt carrier rides on, and the ejector, which is that guy right there, those are actually separate sheet metal pieces that are spot welded in place. On these uh, stamped receiver SKSs, the front trunnion actually comes all the way back and includes all of this material. So it's a much longer front trunnion than you'd have on an AK. The, the concept is the same, but there are some differences in execution there. And again you can see that the receiver, this is the stamped receiver right up here, this piece in the center is all milled trunnion, and then these walls back here are milled trunnion. So the feed lips uh, for the magazine are milled into the, the front trunnion, which is a more reliable way to do them, easier way to do them, than trying to fit them into the stamping. Now one of the interesting things about these stamped receiver guns is that this program appears to have uh, been underway about the same time that the Chinese were also experimenting with a cast receiver. So basically the same, same structure as the milled receiver but made out of a casting. Now I don't have one of those cast receivers to show you, but in addition to casting the receiver they also cast a few of the other parts, notably the rear sight block and the gas block. And so if we look at the rear sight block here on the stamped gun it is also a cast part. It's a little bit difficult to recognize if you're not used to looking at different types of manufactured parts, but this is clearly a machine milled cut. Uh, just the profile of this is clearly milled. This is a semi-finished cast piece. And the same thing applies to the gas block up here. This, the stamped receiver gun has a cast gas block on it, where the milled receiver, the, the normal typical pattern guns, have milled gas blocks. And again, the difference is pretty subtle, but if you can recognize the difference you'll see that this is cast and that's milled. It's also worth pointing out that our stamped gun top cover has a matching serial number on it, and it's not quite identical to a standard SKS top cover. So here's the one off of our Russian gun. Notice that it is flat and smooth back here, where the stamped gun has to have a couple of cutouts in it right there to accommodate the two rivets that hold the rear trunnion on. The information that we have on the stamped SKSs is, is basically all interpolated from the existing guns that have been imported into the US over the years. We don't have official data from China on the production of these or the development of them. Uh, what we can tell from the rifles that have gotten into the US is that the stamped guns were made in 1970 and 1971, and the serial numbers run to about 6,000. The highest known in 1970 is in the, uh, the 5,000s, the highest known in 1971 is in the 6,000s. Chances are there were probably six to 7,000 of them made each year, grand total of 13 to 15,000 guns 
uh, most likely. But of course, like I said, that's just speculation or interpolation from the rifles that we have access to. Uh, they do appear to have had, well, they clearly weren't very successful in whatever the specific overall goal was, because they didn't stay in production after 1971. So it was a couple short runs, you know, 15,000 rifles is, by Norinco Chinese industrial standards, a relatively short run, and then they went back to the milled receivers. So whether this was an issue of it just wasn't as cost effective as they were hoping, there wasn't enough savings to make it worthwhile, or if some of the issues of uh, stock cracking, you know, recoil coming out of the, transferring from the stock, from the receiver into the stock, perhaps those were problems, we're really not sure, because we just don't have much direct information from China about the development of these guns. But these are out there, a bunch of them have come into the US, they're a pretty scarce, pretty cool variant, and now that you know what to look for, perhaps it's something you can find for your own collections. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, thanks again to Christian for loaning me the rifle. See you next time.